Good morning from Miami. This is Dr. John Bennett for Neurosurgical TV. We have an additional uh, webinar uh, thanks to the goodness of Bien, Bien, Ben, uh, ben Zhu from uh, China. Uh, we had a little delay, so we'll let Ben take over. Go ahead, Ben. Okay, thank you, John. So my topic is a comparison of intravascular and uh, microsurgical management of brain aneurysms. Tips and pose. So I come from uh, Shanghai Huashan Hospital. So a very huge neurosurgical department last year. Uh, we have uh, <clears throat> more than one, uh, uh, 18,000 operation. And now we have uh, 800 beds, uh, 40 uh, operation rooms. And I'm a hybrid neurosurgeon. I'm both do, uh, doing the open surgery and the uh, endovascular uh, treatment. So in my opinion, the endovascular treatment should be done by neurosurgeons uh, because we know the anatomy. We see the aneurys aneurysms directly uh, in the operation. And uh, sometimes there's some plaques, calcification, or total sex or perforators uh, surrounding the, uh, or at the dome of the uh, aneurysm sac. So we can treat the aneurysm not only from the inner cavity of the aneurysm, but also from outside of it. And we can do a lot of things immediately after disaster comes. Uh, we can clip uh, or make bypass or uh, to decompression, uh, of the hematoma or to the drainage uh, of the uh, hematoma. So hybrid uh, methods uh, means uh, sometimes we use uh, both endovascular treatment uh, combined with open surgery. So we can give the patients best treatment. So we can use uh, instruments uh, for the uh, in interventional treatment, we can use a guide, uh, guide catheter, uh, including normal guide catheter or balloon, uh, like uh, Mercy so catheter. In, uh, and the so macro I'll catheter and the guide wires, uh, coils, uh, normal coils, hydro coils, or fiber coils, stents, uh, including uh, metal cover rate, uh, the, the metal cover rate uh, have different. Uh, we have three types of uh, different uh, stents. Normal one, normally the metal cover rate is uh, eight to 10 uh, percent. Middle uh, from 18 to 26 uh, percent. Or fluid diverter, normally from 80, 82 to uh, uh, 28 to 35 percent. And uh, we also can use a balloon. Uh, we have an undetachable balloon, hyperglide, hyperform, or sep uh, scepter uh, XC balloon. We also have some detachable balloon. So this is a traditional uh, clipping for this kind of uh, giant aneurysm is uh, quite difficult. You can see this is a very typical uh, ophthalmic uh, segment ICA giant aneurysm. So this is a traditional uh, clipping.
distal temporal occlusion. Then suction to the dome of the aneurysm, make it uh, shrink, then put the fenestrated uh, clips. to shape the neck of the aneurysm. So the result is quite good. For the uh, uh, small MC aneurysm, uh, clipping is still the uh, best choice. It's uh, quite safe and uh, easy. Sometimes we use, uh, uh, we can shaping, clipping, and wrapping the aneurysm of MCA. So this is a long segment uh, dissecting aneurysm. You can see the aneurysm uh, is a very long segment. So we can uh, sh shaping with bipolar after temporal clip of the proximal part, then clip the aneurysm directly and uh, keeps uh, all the perforators patent use uh, fenestrated uh, clips and uh, combined with the wrapping with the dacron at the M1 and the M2. So uh, check with the stores uh, endoscope. You can see the uh, flow cavity was all patent. And uh, after puncture the aneurysm, uh, the aneurysm dome totally have no flu. So sometimes we also can uh, use distal bypass combined aneurysm clip, uh, coiling because sometimes there's no space uh, to spare the uh, ALS. Uh, there is artery, like this patient, we can see the M1 segment was quite, uh, it's very short and there's no space to put the clip to get the uh, proximal control at the same time to save all the perforators. So after the distal bypass, I use uh, coiling so we can see the bypass was all patent and uh, the final result was quite good. All the perforators was uh, kept intact. Sometimes we after the uh, stenting co uh, combined coiling, there's some uh, still ha have some recurrent rate. So we can treat So we can see it's uh, apparently it's a rec uh, recurrent. So the aneurysm dome still keep enlarged. So it ha we have to treat it with clipping. But uh, there's uh, so many coils in the cavity, so we have to remove it.
Professor uh, Bin, your mm -hmm. slide is not moving actually. It's not okay. playing. Okay. So, uh, thank you. We have different uh, techniques of uh, stent uh, assisted uh, coils in presentation. So, this is uh, uh, through the mesh of the uh, stent like this and this is a gelling technique sometimes uh, uh, especially in the bifurcation of the uh, uh, basal tip we can use uh, ice cream technique like this and the uh, uh, hard deploy, uh, deploying of the stent uh, for treat the very uh, flat aneurysms Sometimes in very uh, flat uh, um, blood blister like aneurysm, we can use uh, this half deployment uh, of the stent, combine the coils, and uh, make the uh, like a patch to cover the uh, lesion segment. So it's a very effective one. We also use the uh, kink of the stent to support the coils, or sometimes we can use uh, through some uh, pecan to make the uh, transverse uh, deploy deployment of the uh, stent to support the coils in the basal tip aneurysm. And uh, sometimes we also can use Y shape aneurysm. Uh, uh, stents to make the uh, this is uh, like uh, uh, flu shade. This is also two uh, parallel stent side by side. Uh, it's also a Y shape stent. Sometimes we also can use uh, double layered uh, stents uh, through uh, the cavity of the first. Uh, first one to put the double layered stents to make uh, the metal cover rate uh, even more uh, even more high so we can uh, make the basal cavity uh, beta sometimes we also can use a side by side uh, like the in the basal trunk uh, giant aneurysms like this so this is all uh, interventional treatment for the basal trunk aneurysms. It's uh, uh, almost um, uh, impossible to treat directly with a clipping technique because there's uh, so many uh, perforators. And sometimes, uh, especially in the giant uh, ACAM aneurysms, we can also use uh, X, uh, X shape uh, stenting plus uh, coils and sometimes we also can use uh, a double catheter technique so uh, this is a ACOM aneurysm it's a uh, emergency case we can see the uh, shape of the dome was irregular and we use uh, stent combined coils and uh, the result is quite good. And this is a ruptured vertebral dissecting, uh, dissecting aneurysm. You can see this is uh, uh, for open surgery, it's uh, almost uh, untreatable. So with the uh, help of the stent co uh, combined with coils, we can treat it perfectly. And the basal tip aneurysm, also uh, stent combined coils. So this is a PCA 
P1 segment, very wide neck aneurysm. We can see the, uh, the result, result is uh, perfect. And uh, sometimes uh, for the very uh, small micro aneurysm, for this, uh, for example, this is a ICA uh, aneurysm. It's a very small. We can see the uh, use a stent combined coil, just a one coil. It's seared perfectly. And this is a P1, P2 aneurysm. It's also very uh, difficult to treat directly uh, clipping. But we can use a stent combined coil to get the perfect result. This is a, also a vertebral dissecting aneurysm. We can see the double, uh, double lumen sign. So this is a dissecting aneurysm. So we can see uh, it's also uh, the proximal part of the uh, pica was uh, originate from the dissecting segment. So for the direct uh, clipping, it's uh, very uh, dangerous and difficult. So after the, this is the final result. We can see it's, uh, uh, use a stent combined coil to treat it perfectly. And uh, multiple aneurysm, this is a twin aneurysm of the ICA uh, of somical segment. And this is a Bristol-like aneurysm, still the uh, stent combined coils. So th uh, th this one is uh, the follow-up result. It's uh, uh, totally cured. So uh, for the aneurysm, uh, different uh, options at the different locations. For the cavernous segment aneurysm, uh, for the, uh, if it's uh, ruptured, normally uh, it can have some CCF. So this kind of uh, CCF or uh, segment uh, or cavernous segment aneurysms, we can use a cover stent or detachable uh, balloon or coils. Sometimes uh, coils combined onyx. For the unruptured one, uh, for if it's uh, asymptomatic, uh, we can just follow up. If it's uh, symptomatic, big or giant ones, we can use covered stent or flu diverter or coils uh, combined stents. Sometimes we also can uh, use bypass combined uh, proximal occlusion of ICA with coils or clips like this one. For this, uh, for this patient, uh, we do the uh, balloon occlusion test at the first. Actually, uh, it's uh, uh, negative. So the patient have no symptoms. We can see the uh, very good uh, collateral from uh, ACOM from the control retro side. And uh, there's no delay in, the, uh, in this side. I see a distal part. So we just uh, occlude the ICA directly. So the patient have uh, uh, no symptoms. For uh, paraclinoid uh, uh, aneurysms, uh, if it's a Bristol-like aneurysm, uh, if it's a ruptured one, we use stent combined coils. Or still, uh, but uh, for this treatment, still have high uh, re-ruptured rate. So uh, open surgery uh, still is the better choice. For the unruptured one, uh, we can use full diverter combined coils. Uh, for the multiple aneurysms, uh, we can use uh, full diverters combined coils. 
for small or middle size, we can use stand, uh, Elvis stands. Uh, the metal cover rate is around 20% uh, combined coils. For the big or giant aneurysms, uh, we can use fluid diverters, combined coils. The fluid diverters normally the uh, metal cover rate is around 30 to 35 percent. Or sometimes we can also use uh, hybrid uh, treatment. We can use a uh, long catheter proximal uh, occlusion and the suction of the uh, aneurysm combined distal clipping, uh, di uh, direct uh, clip of the aneurysm. Sometimes we also use uh, by bypass combined the proximal occlusion of the ICA with the coils. And the stent should be uh, cautioned in emergent, uh, emergent stage because uh, after that we should uh, give the patient some anti platelet drugs. So the uh, rebreed rate is quite high. Bloom assisting technique is very useful in treating uh, the intraoperative rupture cases. Sometimes in some segment of the ICA, uh, the recurrent rate is a small, high, uh, it's still high. Like this segment, uh, just uh, after one year, we can see it, the aneurysm recurrent. So we use uh, the second time we use uh, <coughs> stent combined coils. So after this treatment the patient was uh, totally cured. For the PCAM to ICA bifurcation, if it's a small or middle size, uh, if it's a ruptured ones, we use coils, balloon or uh, balloon combined coils in acute stage. For if it's uh, unruptured, we can use uh, stents. Uh, for the big or giant uh, ones, we can use fluid diverters combined coils. Uh, sometimes we also can use uh, hybrid treatment, uh, balloon catheter, proximal occlusion, and the suction combined the, the uh, direct clipping of the aneurysm. Or sometimes we use a bypass combined proxim proximal occlusion of ICA with the coils. Uh, like this uh, patient, we can see it's an irregular shape, uh, uh, PCOM aneurysm. So this is uh, uh, very easy to, uh, for the coiling. And this is uh, also a PCOM aneurysm. You can see with the help of the stent, the PCOM, uh, it's a phenotype uh, of the PCOM. Uh, the PCOM was uh, pr uh, protected very, very well. The aneurysm was uh, totally coiled. And this is uh, another one, uh, a very ugly shape aneurysm. For A1 to ACAM or to A2 uh, segment aneurysm, uh, we can use uh, coils, uh, combined stents. Sometimes we use uh, X or Y shape uh, stenting. Or sometimes we can use small size fluid diverters. Uh, for the giant ACOM aneurysm, uh, may need hybrid treatment. Like this uh, patient, uh, the, this is a very huge uh, ACOM aneurysm. Actually, the, the rear dome of the uh, rear aneurysm dome was uh, even larger than this because this is a partial thrombosed uh, aneurysm. And you can see the, uh, I draw this. After uh, when I, I tried to clip it directly, uh, actually it's impossible. So uh, when you decide uh, dissect the uh, neck of the aneurysm, actually it's uh, uh, ruptured both sides. So I use a fenestrated clip to separate the giant cavity into three uh, part. So then uh, with the uh, uh, coils to treat uh, 
in, in the, uh, for the three parts. So this is the final result. You can see the two fenestrated uh, clips uh, combined the coils, and uh, this is the final result. Uh, it's uh, very stable because uh, with the help of the two uh, fenestrated clips, uh, the coils is uh, very stable. So this is uh, after one year, uh, the, still, uh, the result is still very good. There's no recurrent. For MCA aneurysm, if it's a small size uh, or regular shape, still uh, we can use uh, coils uh, combined stent. But uh, clipping in this segment is still better than the uh, coils. For big or giant M1, M2, uh, or M2 superior trunk aneurysm with the important perforators or partial thrombosed uh, or with uh, some calcification, we can use some flu directors. And uh, this is a irregular shape, uh, M1. We can see it's uh, in enlarged under the dome. Uh, Uh, treat the daughter sac of the aneurysm and the left uh, sent in the uh, We're having some bandwidth problems here. Yeah, we could uh, request. Just, just hang in there, it'll come through. Just be patient. And keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> All can be treated by coils, uh, coiling, and the stenting. Certainly not a perfect platform. So, Sir Bin, are you there? His, his connections is. Not good. During his last presentation, it was very well. We did not have any problem. Okay. Well, just we'll just wait. Hopefully, it'll come through. Yeah, yeah, it should come around. Yeah. John. Yes. Yeah, Professor, we are okay. here. Yeah, we're here. We'll so wait. you can see. Okay. Go ahead, Dr. Ben. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. This is a very uh, We're not having the luck today. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything is going to be all right soon. Dr. Bin, can you hear us? Dr. Uh, Bin? Yeah, the screen is moving. Let, yeah, let me see if... Uh, the screen is moving. Yeah. But, He's his audio is on, according to the panel. Doctor Ben, can you hear us? Yes, yes. Okay, go ahead. We can't yeah, hear you. Please. Go ahead. Okay. So you can see, I just uh, put some coils in the proximal part of the uh, big giant aneurysm. Actually, the aneurysm was uh, cured. 
we already published some of this result of the PCA aneurysm. This is a vertebral aneurysm. You can see it's a, this segment is a quite uh, at the uh, abdomen part of the uh, pons. So it's easy to treat with uh, coils, but it's difficult to treat with a direct clipping. This is also a visceral trunk aneurysm. You can see the ICA, PICA, PCA perfectly, and uh, with the coils combined uh, stents, the result is very good. So for this kind of uh, aneurysm, the clipping is impossible. So now we have, uh, uh, we get more and more uh, use uh, of the flu diverters. So flu diverters uh, include a, a pipeline or silk uh, or thread. And this, uh, we also have subpass. In China, we have a tube bridge. It's uh, uh, come from a uh, microport company. So this is a, a huge aneurysm at the ICA. After the flu diverter, you can see after six months, we uh, the aneurysm was gone. And uh, this is a hemodynamic change uh, after the flu diverters. So the pipeline, uh, we still, uh, couldn't use uh, in the distal part of the ICA or M, uh, normally uh, for M1 uh, or distal than M1, A1, it's uh, still off label use. So this is uh, uh, articles about the uh, safety of the flu diverters and the so the pipeline, uh, pipeline is both safe and effective with a complete occlusion rate of uh, approximately uh, 75% uh, at uh, uh, 7.8 months and the low rate of neurological morbidity and the mortality. So this is a, re a result for pipeline. We can see this is a a very dangerous uh, brisk aneurysm, uh, but it's an uh, uh, unruptured one. We can see the dissecting here, the double lumen of the, uh, at the base of the aneurysm. So after the uh, pipeline, we can see it's totally cured. And uh, this is another case it's also a very uh, dangerous part. It's also uh, like a Bristol-like aneurysm. So we treat it with a, a flu diverter. And this is a, a seven, after seven mo uh, six months, we can see it's totally cured. So this is a, also a very ugly shape. Uh, Cavernous segment aneurysm. For this kind of uh, aneurysm, actually, it's uh, uh, impossible to direct treatment uh, clipping. So we use uh, pipeline combined some coils. So after uh, six months, we can see the aneurysm was totally cured. So this is uh, also. Uh, cavernous segment aneurysm, use some uh, coils uh, plus some uh, uh, pipeline. Coils just uh, uh, very uh, small uh, to help the thrombosis of the uh, in the uh, aneurysm cavity. So you don't need to compact it very, uh, very compactly. So this is uh, another case. 
this is a very ugly shape aneurysm. So after this uh, first pipeline, we can see there's some steel uh, flow in the uh, aneurysm. So after the second one, it's almost stopped flowing to the aneurysm. So after uh, six months, we can see the aneurysm shrinked and this is the final result. This is another uh, pipeline case. We can see this uh, is this also a, a covenant segment aneurysm. This is a final result. The vessel cavity was uh, actually it's uh, totally reshaped. So uh, for uh, this is a experience of uh, my former colleague uh, Donglei Songs. He used uh, a lot of this kind of uh, pipelines, and the result is quite good. ESA follow-up is also very good. For uh, but uh, uh, still some complications uh, in one died one pe uh, one patient was died so the mortality is around one percent this is a, a very uh, difficult case because this uh, is a m1 segment uh, aneurysm and there's uh, there's some very important fatal uh, uh, perforators uh, around this segment so they tried to put a pipeline but uh, after the pipeline successfully deployed and with some coils in the uh, cavity the second day there's some uh, hemorrhage in the distal part of the MCA. So actually the final, uh, the follow-up uh, is uh, quite good, but uh, the patient still have some uh, neurological deficit. For the this is uh, for the uh, bypass for aneurysm. I, uh, I, I think it's almost time for Professor Lawton. So this is uh, our uh, st strategy for the uh, ICA aneurysm. I already presented uh, uh, in some, uh, so I just uh, take a glance. So the uh, bloom occlusion test is uh, critical, is very crucial to uh, judge uh, what kind of strategy we need and uh, how, uh, how much the blood flow replacement we should do. So for this patient, uh, the bloom occlusion test uh, was uh, uh, positive and uh, the uh, blood flow replacement should cover MCA and uh, combined ACA territory. So this, this patient, I use uh, saphenous span. So this is the final result. We can see the uh, bypass covered the whole hemisphere. So this is a type two ICA aneurysm, poor collateral ACOM and the BCOM. The blood, uh, the blood flow replacement should cover left MCA ter uh, territory. Because this is a female patient, the STA was quite small, so we use uh, radio artery. So this is a final result. We can see the, M the whole MCA territory was uh, uh, replaced by the uh, bypass. Type three. Uh, this kind of patient, uh, which uh, ACOM was uh, uh, quite good, 
PCOM was very small, uh, but the uh, patient is still uh, have some symptoms uh, after 30 minutes bone occlusion test. So, uh, but he is a boy, so the uh, STA was uh, uh, pretty thick. So I do the double bypass of STA to MCA. So this is a loop technique. And uh, after that double bypass, I do the progressively occlusion of ICA in seven days. So this is the final result. You can see the double bypass was all patent and then uh, at the seventh day, a totally occluded of the ICA. The final result is uh, very good. This is type four ICA. It's okay. Hi. Uh, yeah, hello. Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bin? Yeah, yeah. Professor yeah. Lawton yeah. has joined us. Okay, Thanks. so okay. I yeah, should uh, yeah. finish my cases and uh, give the time to Professor Lawton. Professor Bin, we can thank.